Hey guys, today we're going to talk about angle bisectors within triangles. So if you have a triangle and you draw your three angle bisectors, remember an angle bisector cuts an angle in half. So there's an angle bisector and we're just approximating, not constructing. So another one would look like that. And the third one would look like that. And if we were accurate, then they all come together at one point. That's a point of concurrency. Anytime three or more lines meet at one point, the lines are concurrent, and that's our point of concurrency. That is called the in-center. So the in-center is the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors of a triangle. Okay, those, uh, or that point, that point of concurrency, is always equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So what that means is this distance, the perpendicular distance to this side and to this side, and to this side are all the same. Okay, so that's the second type of center we've discussed. The in-center is the second one. We have the circumcenter, which was where all of the perpendicular bisectors of the three sides meet. The angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the angle or is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the two sides of the angle. So point D here is on the perpendicular bisector, I'm sorry, on the angle bisector of angle BAC. So its perpendicular distance to the sides would be equidistant. So from D to B and D to C would have to be the same length. So if AD bisects BAC, angle BAC and segments DB and AB are perpendicular, and segments DC and AC are perpendicular, then the length of DB is equal to the length of DC. Okay, so the perpendicular distance to the sides will be the same. Conversely, if a point is in the interior of an angle, so point D here is in the interior, and it's equidistant from the sides of the triangle, which means its perpendicular distance is congruent. Then it is on the angle bisector. So it lies on the bisector of the angle. Okay? So in order to know that AD is a bisector, this distance right here, DC, has to be perpendicular and the same distance. Okay, so if segment DB is perpendicular to AB and segment DC is perpendicular to AC and DB and AC have equal length, then ray AB bisects angle BAC. Example one, find the measure of angle CBE. Okay, so in this diagram, from point E to C is 21, and E to D is 21, so they are congruent segments, and they are perpendicular to the sides of the angle. So because EC is perpendicular to BC, and ED is perpendicular to BD, and EC and ED are both the same length, Ray BE bisects angle CBD by the converse of the angle bisector theorem. So we're asked to find the measure of angle CBE. The measure of CBE is the same as the measure of angle DBE. 
at 31 degrees. So the measure of angle CBE is 31 degrees. Uh, this up here looks a little too much like a zero. All right, so we're going to go back to that hospital problem that we talked about in our last lesson where we wanted a hospital that was equidistant from the three cities. Okay? We're going to assume, once again, that there is a major highway between these two cities that's relatively straight, won't be exactly straight, and from here to here and here to here. Obviously, they can't all be straight because it's not going to go right through Salt Lake there. So now we want to come up with an alternate location that would be equidistant from the three highways. Okay, so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to approximate the three angle bisectors. So there's one, two, and three. It's an approximation, not a construction. It came pretty close. If it was constructed properly, these would all touch at one spot. So somewhere in this area is where the hospital would be so that it is the same distance from the three highways. So that means this distance and this perpendicular distance and this perpendicular distance would all be the same. That point where they all met is called the in-center. And it's called the in-center because it's the center of what's called the inscribed circle. So if each of these bright greens are a radius, the circle would look like this. That is the center of the inscribed circle. Clearly, it's not perfect. Again, this is an approximation, not a construction. If it was a construction, we would be a lot more accurate. A spider's position on its web relative to an approaching fly and the opposite sides of the web form congruent angles. So here's the fly. Here's the left side and right side. Here's my congruent angle. So the fly that goes straight is going right along the angle bisector to the center of the web. If this fly veers off but still hits one edge of the web, will the spider have to move farther from one side versus the other? No, because the spider is sitting right here on the angle bisector that perpendicular distance and that perpendicular distance must be the same. For what value of x does p lie on the bisector of angle j? So, in other words, I want this right here to be an angle bisector. If that's going to be an angle bisector, then these are congruent and these have to be congruent. Okay, so from the converse of the angle bisector theorem, you know that P lies on the bisector of angle J if P is equidistant from the sides of J, which means when the length of KP is the same as the length of LP. So X plus 1 is equal to 2X minus 5. I'm going to move that into the margin to have more space to solve it. Okay, so what I would do is subtract x from both sides. So 1 equals x minus 5. Then I would add 5 to both sides. So x equals 6. So when x is 6, 
Point P lies on the bisector of angle J. Okay, here's a theorem to go along with what we've already discussed. Con concurrency of angle bisectors of a triangle. The angle bisectors, which are AP, CP, and BP, intersect at a point that is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So this intersection is the same distance to each side. So PD, PE, and PF are all equal length. Okay, so if AP, BP, and CP are angle bisectors, then PD, PE, and PF, the distances from that in center to the sides are equal. In the diagram, L is the in center, which means that FL, JL, and HL are angle bisectors. Find the length of segment LK. We want that segment length right there. So by the concurrency of angle bisectors theorem, or angle bisectors of a triangle theorem, the in center L is equidistant. We're going to abbreviate that from the sides of triangle FHJ. So to find the length of LK, you could find LI or LJ. Any one of those will work. I'm going to deal with LI. And here's why. I've got a right triangle right there with two numbers on it, one on a leg, one on a hypotenuse. So we're going to find the length of LI by using the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to do this off to the side. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared plus, or, I'm sorry, equals c squared. We haven't used this in this class yet, and in future lessons, we'll get to where we really get in depth on the Pythagorean theorem. For now, what we need to know is a and b are the legs, c is the hypotenuse. In this right triangle, li is a leg and hi is a leg. Li we don't know the length of, so let's just call that a. a squared plus hi we do know the length of, that's 12 squared. And the hypotenuse hl we know the length of, so that is 15 squared. Okay, so if we type 12 squared or 12 times 12 in our calculator, or if we do it on paper, we're going to get 144, and 15 squared is 225. Now we want to solve for A. So to do that, we're going to subtract 144 from both sides. Okay. So 225 minus 144 is 81. Now we always do opposite operations to solve an equation. The opposite of squared is a square root. And that cancels out that square. So A is plus or minus the square root of 81. And the square root of 81 is 9, so A is plus or minus 9. But let's think about this. Can a segment actually have a negative length? The answer to that is obviously no. So A is 9. Okay, so this side right here is 9. Li is 9. Li and Lk are the same, so Lk is also 9. I'd like you to pause the video and try numbers 1 through 4. 
In number one, this right here and this here are perpendicular distances to the sides, and they happen to be the same length. That guarantees that this is an angle bisector. So 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 5. There's not a lot of space here, so I'm going to do two steps at once. Minus 2x and plus 5. So we've moved all the variables left and all the constants right, and that gives me 1x equals 10. This tells me that this is an angle bisector. These are perpendicular distances, which means they must be congruent. So 8x equals 7x plus 3. Subtract 7x, 1x equals 3. Do we have enough information to conclude that AC bisects angle DAB? The answer is no because AB, as far as I know, is not perpendicular to CB, and AD, as far as I know, is not perpendicular to CB. I need to know that the perpendicular distances are congruent, but I don't. In example four, so that picture at the top of this page, suppose you are not given HL or HI, but you're given that JL is 25. So I'm going to come up and erase what's already written there. So we have new assumptions, and now JL is 25. And Ji is 20. Find the length of LK. So that is a hypotenuse. That is a leg. And once again, we're going to have to deal with Li. But Li and LK are going to be the same length. So there's a leg that I don't know. There's a leg that I do know. And there's a hypotenuse. So the two legs, one of them I don't know, the other is 20. Twenty squared is four hundred, and twenty five squared is six twenty five. So if I subtract 400, I get a squared is 225. And when I take a square root, I get a is plus or minus, the square root of 225 is 15. But again, I can't have a negative side length, so a must be 15, which means that the length of LK is 15. And on this chart we will deal today with angle bisectors. Angle bisectors of a triangle look like this. Okay, angle bisectors divide angles in half, which makes two congruent angles. Anytime you divide an angle in half, you get a pair of congruent angles. The point of concurrency is the in-center. That in-center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Okay, so in this case, 
the perpendicular distance to this side and this side and this side are all the same. And then we have to decide where that in center is in a right triangle, obtuse triangle, and acute triangle. So in a right triangle, if I bisect the angles, it's inside. In an acute triangle, if I bisect the angles, the point of concurrency is inside. In an obtuse triangle, if I bisect the three angles, the point of concurrency is inside. So the angle bisectors will always meet inside of a triangle. So the in center is always in a triangle. It's in a right triangle, it's in an obtuse triangle, and it is inside of an acute triangle as well.